forwards inside, it's I suppose a lot of times it's to figure out what you want to do with your extra man and where you put him, like and where you facilitate him and can we use him better maybe for a puck out option uh, or free up somebody in that regard? Like, because we were killed on puck outs, like, especially in the first half there, there was a run of them there and, and tip were turning them over easily and, and getting easy scores. And um, so maybe, you know, if we, if we could have freed up someone, the likes of a Shane Coney or someone that can take a puck out in that area, we, we just didn't seem that comfortable hitting shorter puck outs. And then when we did, Tip were very good at closing us down. We didn't seem comfortable as a set of backs to work that ball out either. Like So maybe that's where the long strike and we were planting the feet and just driving it there at times. Whereas like Pari, in fairness, anytime he got it, the head was up. He was trying to scan and see is there somewhere he could put it. A lot of the time, I don't think he had options. Um, but I think too many times we just weren't comfortable working that ball out from our back line. And we weren't comfortable on our own puck outs for the majority of the game. And maybe a bit more, I suppose, direction or instruction on, on that spare person. If we're going with two inside, how can we use that spare person rather than it being maybe a corner forward that just rambles around the place? Because sometimes at this stage, with the way the game has gone, I don't know, does that work anymore either? Like, So maybe you, maybe you should be looking at freeing up someone at the back and use that like you know and and depending on the players we have and where we're the way we line out I suppose you have to try and work your puck outs to around that like you know it's not a case anymore where you have the likes of Johnny Glynn and Joe Kenning that you can just lash it down uh, anywhere and, the, and they'll usually either catch it or they'll, they'll break it in favour of a Galway player so I think you have to kind of change up your game to suit the players you have out there as well the Maroon and White Pod brought to you by CityLink. For bookings, timetables, updates and any other information, head to citylink.ie. So I'm delighted now to be joined by former Goa hurler Tony O'Gregan and current Goa under 20 hurler manager Fergal Healy to look back on Goa's narrow uh, defeat to Tipperary on a final scoreline of Tipperary 126, Goa 24 points in round two of the Alliance League. Fergal, Coming to you first, what did you make of the performance overall from Galway today? Um, I suppose it was a bit sketchy, I suppose, in, in some regards. Um, there was passages where, you know, they were quite good. And then I suppose just getting that consistency into it at, at, in the, at this early stage of the year. They're obviously still very much uh, trialling out a lot of players and hoping that a few players put their hands up uh, and push for positions. So... Yeah, look at Tip are probably a little bit further ahead than Galway at the moment. I'd say in their in their training schedule, they were a bit sharper. Thought they used the ball quite well, um, probably a lot more than Galway did. And yeah, they were probably well worth their five points in it for a finish. And Tony, what did what did you think of them today? Yeah, I thought it took us a while to settle into the game, and uh, I think the intensity probably caught Galway the first quarter, and that's probably owing to us playing Westmead last week and. You know, Galway playing or Tipperary playing Dublin, and they were just at the pitch of it a lot quicker. And you know, really at sixes and sevens that first quarter, I think like Tip had maybe the three goal chances in that first twenty minutes, and you know had thirteen or fourteen points on the board. But you know, once we settled into it and got into that intensity of the game, I think it was for quite even for the next three quarters. And you know, there was a lot of positives there. I suppose we are trying out lads, and there was a bit of probably uncertainty in defence at times and you know our use of possession broke down as Fergus said at different times as well but I think that'll come and uh, you know I think we've probably a lot more scope to improve on where you know as Fergus said Tipper that bit sharper and a bit, that bit dirt down the line than us and uh, you know mightn't have as much scope for improvement later in the season Just something Tony mentioned there Fergal we were really kind of at sixes and sevens in the opening quarter, after 18 minutes, we're 10-4 down and we're probably lucky at that stage that it was only six points. Why do you think that was? Uh, there was probably similarities to the the cork Kikini game um, last evening, whereby Galway were kind of standing off. The tip lads, the tip were kind of, tip lads were using the ball quite well. And like Tiberi, they're always very good kind of risky players in that they're, they get their ball to hand more than often. Like when that breaks down, um, it doesn't happen that often with Tip. And um, they seem to be getting a lot of joy there. Galway were kind of 
standing off them and when Galway got the ball in they were I think they were striking from too far out they were we were trying to deliver ball too far back and when you do that you're giving too much time for the opposition to set up against you like or, or to, to pick it up when when Galway got possession and they started working through the lines and getting further out the field to measure their own deliveries I think they got a bit more joy like so it kind of toed and froed for a little while but definitely in that that time Tipperary created a lot of space and Galway like, gave them a lot of space and in fairness you know TJ and and was this, uh, Jack Grealish and they, you know there was a lot of space in front of those guys there so there was um, it seemed to be bypassing Shane Cooney as well there so um, yeah they got a lot of joy and as Ogie alluded to they, they definitely could have got in for a couple of goals as well um, but yeah they were they were impressive in that early early stages like they looked like they were going to run away with it again similar to Kilkenny but when Galway actually pushed up on them got a bit closer to them got stuck into them got a few tackles began turning over ball and then started working their own the ball up themselves rather than just driving it out of the back line um, and became a bit more measured and a bit more composed uh, they seemed to get back into the game and be able to you know work, work some scores themselves Just on that word consistency Tony they're obviously trying to get it at the minute, but it can be different. It can be difficult at, at stages too for Goa, as you mentioned, the West Me game last week, uh, going into this not ideal preparation. And then probably thrown in on top of that, there's a few new players and the Thomas's lads only coming back. Is is that the kind of biggest challenge for Goa at the minute? Yeah, I think when you're making changes in every line, like, you know, maybe TJ at full and Shane Cooney at six, it's going to take you three or four games to kind of read the patterns of the lads around you. You know, when Jack Grealish is going for a ball, when do I sweep in behind him and vice versa? And, you know, it takes you a couple of games to get up to that pitch. And, you know, unfortunately for some of the younger lads, like they're, they're only going to get these chances now, maybe early in the season where, you know, there's more experience to come back in and the likes of Joe Cooney and Dahi Burke and Kyle Mannion. So, um, you know, I think Galway will kind of iron out these things as the season goes on. There's no point having them perfect at this stage of the season. Uh, and it's going to be, you know, a while before we see that kind of consistency again. But, um, you know, I still think there's a couple of things we can do better, as Fergal alluded to there. We're still hitting a lot of ball from inside our 45, maybe 70 or 80 yards into our full forward line. And, you know, it's given the team an easy chance to counter-attack against us. And, you know, again, there was no goal threat today. And we're kind of hoping that Aim O'Shea will bring that throughout the season as well, where, you know, we just seem very... Um, orthodox inside in terms of two against three and you know there's not much low ball going in there's not much ball coming from our midfielders or our half forward line in front of our full forwards and you know we're going to have to create more of a goal threat during the season and maybe play three inside at, at times in the game as well so there are a couple of areas I'd like us to see maybe changing and get more consistent on this season compared to the last two. Just on that, because it's a good point, uh, Tony, you touched on about Galway's kind of forward setup. For a lot of for a lot of stages today, we had Jason Flynn and Connor Cooney inside, and then we kind of had Evan Nyland, Roland Roman, uh, Tom Monaghan, Roman too, kind of into the middle third. We've seen Connor play at eleven. What did you make of that overall, Tony? There was a lot of rotation, yeah. So um, it probably worked at times, but again, you know, I. I I don't know if you had a seven foot player in there at times. Some of the deliveries are just so far back the field, Paul. Like they're we're striking from our own forty five. It's traveling long. It's traveling straight, and you know it's a defender's ball seven eight times out of ten. Like you know, so we've to kind of get better at finding our midfielders with that sharp ball where they can deliver at an angle or deliver lower into you know space in front of Connor Whelan, space in front of Aaron Island, space in front of Jason Flynn, and we will get more out of them that way, but. You know, that's probably something I've been critical of the team the last couple of years where we kind of seem to be, have a pattern of that. We get a ball to wing back and it's, you know, a long diagonal from there or a long straight ball from there. And, you know, we're probably only winning maybe three out of six, three out of seven and and it's scrappy. Like, and, you know, we had no shot on goal today, I think, from a goal scoring point of view. So, you know, I think that's a big development for the team if they want to push on and, you know, win All-Ireland semi-finals and challenge for All-Ireland honours that you're going to have to be creating five or six goal chances, you know, down the line in championship matches to, you know, really consider yourself All-Ireland contenders. Is that something for you two further we need to improve on? Um, uh, For sure, yeah. And like when you're playing two forwards inside, it's, I suppose, a lot of times it's to figure out what you want to do with your extra man and where you put them, like, and where you facilitate them. And 
can we use him better maybe for a puck out option uh, or free up somebody in that regard like because we were killed on puck outs like especially in the first half there there was a run of them there and, and Tip were turning them over easily and, and getting easy scores um, so maybe you know if we if we could have freed up someone the likes of a Shane Cooney or someone that can take a puck out in that area we, we just didn't seem that comfortable hitting shorter puck outs and then when we did Tip were very good at closing us down we didn't seem comfortable as a set of backs to work that ball out either. Like so, maybe that's where the long strike and we were planting the feet and just driving it there at times. Whereas, like Parik, in fairness, any time he got it, the head was up. He was trying to scan and see is there somewhere he could put it. A lot of the time, I don't think he had options. Um, but I think too many times we just weren't comfortable working that ball out from our back line, and we weren't comfortable on our own puck outs for the majority of the game and maybe a bit more, I suppose, direction or instruction on, on that spare person. If we're going with two inside, how can we use that spare person rather than it being maybe a corner forward that just rambles around the place? Because sometimes at this stage, with the way the game is gone, I don't know, does that work anymore either? Like, So maybe you, maybe you should be looking at freeing up someone at the back and use that like you know and and depending on the players we have and where we're the way we line out I suppose you have to try and work your puck outs to around that like you know it's not a case anymore where you have the likes of Johnny Glynn and Joe Kenning that you can just lash it down uh, anywhere and, and they'll usually either catch it or they'll, they'll break it in favour of a Galway player so I think you have to kind of change up your game to suit the players you have out there as well do we not have the ball winners? Or obviously, there's more players to come back for it, and we could see maybe Joseph Cooney in that role. But just when you mentioned there, are, are the ball winners not there in that squad to play that kind of, I suppose, from your own puck out from a goal perspective? Is it not there, do you think? Yeah, I suppose it's, it's where you put them. Like, I mean, Connor Cooney is well able to win his own ball. Like, Quilo is able to win his own ball. But, like, do you want them out the field? Like, Joe is able to win his own ball. But, you know, we can't have them outside and we can't have them inside as well. Um, you know, Evan is well able to win ball if it's given to him properly as well. You know, and even he fielded a good ball there on the sideline as well. He's strong. You know, he's not the tallest player, but like just because you're not the tallest player doesn't mean you can't uh, be useful on puck outs either. So, again, it just goes back to back to the way we, we set up like um, and we we seem to move around a lot like Conor Cooney was inside one minute and you know there in the second half he was back in the full back line you know now which shows the, the work rate that Conor was putting in he had a great day out as well he was very sharp he got five points I think from play um, but I suppose you know Gavin Lee's another guy uh, can he be an option as well somewhere like he he's, he's, he's well built he's tall He's mobile. How can we get him on more ball? But it's just when we were when we went through that run of long fuckouts that kept breaking down. We needed something to change that up. Like and again, look at this is stuff as you, as the lads that come back as Dahi Burke comes back into it. Um, you know, you've you've you know Bino has to come back in there somewhere as well. Like you know, they could play him wing forward, centre forward, inside line as well. So there is no, there is plenty of players. Maybe we were just under pressure at times today in that regard like maybe the midfield physically I thought we were under pressure as well at times uh, we were out but I thought Tip dominated that area for most of the game um, so yeah look at the, there's a lot to work on what you'd like from these games is you know I, I was hoping Owen Lawless would have been playing today it would have been nice to see him see him uh, how he'd fare at that level again you need a few more of these as I was disappointed for TJ TJ you know, he seemed a bit jittery on the ball, but again, it could be a case that he's he's doing so much at the moment that you know he's a bit tired, like like because he's he's a colossus there for UL and the Fitzgibbon, um, and we'll see that again on Wednesday night now when he comes up against the the Galway lads. But he's 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 one of UL's best players, and I know he's very highly regarded down there by by you know other players and and mentors you know from different counties. So he's a guy I, I would still think this guy can do a job I know it might have went great from today but again they are, they are only league games at the end of the day it's about learning it's about see what, what we can improve on um, and the likes of Gavin Lee he got a couple of great scores and showed he is capable at this level Like, and I suppose we just need maybe a couple of more of them guys now to, to keep putting their hand up um, you know the game I think kind of bypassed Don Roche a little bit physically I thought he was under pressure at times but he is he's an excellent player as well 
and they seem to be trying to free Donald up at times as he is very good on the ball even though I don't think again going back to the way we worked the ball out from our defence we didn't seem to be comfortable enough to be able to do that to find Donald when he was free so that kind of role didn't seem to work for him today It is something that they've they're trying to I suppose get more into their game Tony they're trying to play this more of a short passing game we've seen it against West maybe we've seen it at stages again today but I suppose it's, it's probably new for some of these players what they're trying to go or trying to bring into their game Yeah and listen I think most inter-county teams now are, are trying to play the same way in terms of fearing it up but you know, putting the ball over the half back line or, or playing it through the lines or playing it around the fences and uh it's just creating that space in, in that middle zone there that's getting very hard because you have halfbacks who are just pushing so hard on, on half forwards and, you know, midfielders pushing so hard and other midfielders that, you know, there's so much less time and space in terms of finding those pockets and in terms of finding those passes that just allows you to play, play the ball in a bit better to your forward line. But, you know, you have to persist with it. And, you know, I definitely think the panel looks stronger this year when you look at the lads that weren't playing today and, and, how oh, well, you know, as Fergal Lewis there, Gavin Dunn and, um, you know, John Cooney showed glimpses of what he's capable of and, and looks, you know, very mobile and, and laid off some beautiful hand passes and stuff to bring lads into play. And, um, you know, I think it was encouraging to see, I think Keenan Fahey is a, a real option for us at wing back. Like you can just kind of saunter up the field a bit like Kyle Hayes and, and create overlaps and, and dis- distributes the ball really well like a forward. And, you know, he can score from distance as well. So, you know, I think we're starting to create options in terms of, you know, having nine or 10 backs and having nine or 10 forwards for positions. And, you know, the midfield area is a concern in terms of who will be in there that will give us that ability to, you know, drop deep and and link the play. And obviously Colin Mannion's an ideal player for that. And it's just trying to find partners for him in there at different times in the game that will, you know, give us an advantage in there. And, uh, you know, but I think the base of the squad is there, the ingredients are there, and it's just, you know, for management to be patient and supporters in terms of persisting with this change in style of play and, and you know, allowing the younger lads to just kind of gain these experiences and, you know, it's a, it's a work in progress. Like You mentioned younger lads there, Tony. Is Gavin Lee the biggest positive out of the younger players so far from the league? Based on what I saw today, um, you know, he, he, he can he can run the ball, he can link the play, he got in some really good tackles, he won't break in ball. Um, you know, he looks a really good, you know, athlete and, and and a smart player in possession. Like, and you know, I think there is, you know, a good possibility that he will see game time come championship and and may even start you know, a game or two as well. Um like outside of that, like TJ has been on the panel a couple of years and, and as Ferg alluded to, you know, has been unbelievable for UL the last couple of years in Fitzgibbon. So like he's going to definitely be a live option in terms of the back line as well. Um, Ronan Glenn, we've seen what he's done the last couple of seasons and is continuing to progress as well. And, you know, John Cooney is probably the other interesting one in terms of um his development and, uh, you know, Donald, um, you know, it's, I, I'd say I'd like to see another two or three games in midfield to see how it goes. Um, I think he done well in aspects today in terms of distribution and cut out a few really good high puck outs in terms of knocking them down to lads and winning the breaks. And, uh, you know, there's probably more to come from him as well. Just on our options between Fergal fullback options, if you if you look at the minute, you have Di Burke, you have Fintan Burke, you have Garage McInerney, Shane Cooney, and TJ Brennan. Is it's obviously great having five players for as your options for full and centre back, but is it a bit of a problem in one sense? Like can those players only play full or centre, or do you think some of them can adapt and play in the corners or wings? Because it's probably a dilemma to go where you're faced with at the moment. Yeah, I suppose most players need need a bit of flexibility too. Um, and the way the game has gone, you don't necessarily have your traditional three standing on the edge of the square like like Ogie used to do back in the day. Um, get a nosebleed if he passed the half back line at some times ago. But um, you know, you have to be your full back could end up anywhere now. Like um, a lot of them, they're dealing with, with with marking two forwards and and where does that third person go then, or where, where does he stay? Um, I you know I'd I'd like to see maybe Finton around that that area like he he's been you know unbelievable for for Thomas's 
you know, for a good few years now. Um, I don't think he's really played in that position much for Galway, really. I think he, Finton is more of a central player anyway, um, whether that's at three or six. Um, you know, you have Dahi, like Darren only came on today as well. Like, so he'll come back and, he, you know, he had a great season last year. He'll, he'll probably nail down a cornerback position. Um, Tiernan Killeen is another player um, that's, I, I, I would have huge time for. I think he could he could definitely be a long-term maybe solution to number six as well. Um, he plays around that area for for uh, the University of Galway there at the moment as well. So there is a lot of options. I say, Owen Lawless is a really good player. You'd like to see him giving a, a goal. Like I suppose it's just where you, but like, I wouldn't get too hung up on on those things either because they're you know they have to rotate around. Shane Cooney has been brilliant for Thomas's as well. Again, it probably didn't go you know unbelievable from today, but you know once he gets back up to speed and gets you know a, good, a few more weeks training, I suppose with the lads under his belt, like he's a really good player. Shane Cooney, he's he's really good on the ball. He's as tough as nails. Um, I would expect to see him taking one of those six uh, back positions as well. And at the end, you know, you have Garage Mack as well, like, and you could never rule Garage Mack out, like, who's a, a monster of a man as well. Um, could play anywhere, will never let you down, will give you 100%. And who's to say Garage Mack can't come in and, and, and work around that square area as well, like, so there is options um, for them. I suppose it's just, again, these league games, people get excited about them this time of year because that, that's all that's on and that's why they're kind of relevant. You know, in a few months' time, you, you don't even remember what happened in this game. So, it's all kind of relevant at the moment. And for the lads, they'll be trying to see, okay, you know, who put their hand up. You know, they'll, they'll look at the Fitzgibbon games, you know, over the next the next week now between the midweek games and whatever whatever lads are involved in the finals at the weekend and see see how that's going as well. And um, and that's where the likes of TJ could go and have a storm or Wednesday, put today behind him and off he goes again. Like, you know, so... They have a few weeks now to, to to work on that again. You have other lads coming back as well. Like I mean, like Davy Burke is probably going to come back into some sort of role there. Like you know, could he be a free man around the middle, dropping back, getting on ball? You know, maybe not for the the sixty seventy minutes of a game, but definitely, I think he has a role to play in that setup as well. And if you could get to the stage, you know, a few of these younger lads could take starting positions, and you could have. I'm not saying these guys shouldn't be starting, but the likes of, of Joe Cooney, Garage Mack, Davy Burke, and that type of player coming on for your last 20, 25 minutes, wouldn't it be a great position for Galway to be in, to bring that experience? If you could get enough players to get you to that stage of the game and be in contention to, to win a game and then look at bringing them two or three or four players back on. Like, But again, if you throw Cahill Mannion and Brian Concannon into the mix as well, like two of the best players we've had for the last few years... Um, would make a big difference. So, I think Ogi said it there earlier. Like, we have a lot of players to come back into into that team and panel that will only improve it. So, again, I wouldn't I wouldn't be too despondent on on today for them. They just need to to look at the positive positives in it and see what they can do to work on the the negative aspects of it. Is that a challenge for you with the three and six with the options they have at the minute, Tony? No, I, I think uh, it'll settle down and, and I think um, they will pick it on form coming closer to the championship and, and weigh up all the factors. But um, like I think you have a lot of proven players there as Fergal outlined and Jesus, I think it's it's going to be a bit of a headache for management and that's what you want to see. Like, you know, you have proven All-Ireland winners there at club and county level and All-Stars and, uh, you know, they're going to provide great experience for younger lads coming like Tiernan and Killeen as well. So, you know, I think we're in a in a healthy position there in terms of the spine of the defence. And uh, you know, overall I I'd say we've nine or ten lads who absolutely could nail down a place in that defence and uh, you know, we'll give her a very solid look to it no matter what six you play and with the variety and flexibility you need now as a defender, you know, any players can find themselves in, in those positions under puck outs or at various stages of the match. So you've got to kind of be comfortable in a lot of areas of the field at different moments. And um, I think we do have that flexibility and uh, adaptability in our defence. And, and that's a, a very positive thing going forward. Like. Just something we did, we did touch on. We touched on the uh, opening minutes of the first half. We were trailing 10-4, but... In fairness, goal showed huge character then in the second quarter, the first half, to get it back to 16-13, uh, going in trailing by three points at halftime. Uh, going on the first half, 
that was a positive in one sense, Tony, that the team and the players out there showed character in that sense. Yeah, because it could have easily got away from us. But I think around the, the 20th minute, you'd see a couple of the forwards started to really dig in. I think Quilo come out to half forward, won a puck out and, and laid a point on for Evan. Um, Evan might have done the same. We just got a couple of scores there really quickly and you could get a sense then from the forward line. There was a good communication, a good body language and we just started to break down Tipperary's puck out between then and half time and you know, give ourselves a foothold in the game and you know, that's going to happen where a team gets a run in you. And, uh, you know, I think a huge basis of that, as we said earlier on, the first quarter was we just weren't at the intensity of it. And, you know, I think there's factors there in terms of we had a good game coming into it last week and, and, and tip had. So, you know, it was good to see once we got our intensity levels up and our physicality levels up that we were more than a match for tip and, you know, could have easily got a drawn out of us. And, uh, you know, I still think there's great scope for improvement in terms of, you know, our, our pass and execution and, you know, been better on, on the puck outside of it and the restart side of it, both on opposition and our own. But, um, you know, they're the types of things that you are going to have to work at, you know, two games into a league. And, uh, you know, you'd imagine as the, the pitches get better and you move into summer evenings that, you know, the the, the clarity of role for players around that and, and their own skill execution will just be on the rise all the time. And, uh, you know, it'll be a very kind of different look to Galway come summertime with, with the restarts and the sharpness of it. Just something we did, you did touch on about the puck outs, but even I thought from open play, Fergal, at stages, when Tipperary's shots did go short and Derek got it, like his distribution at stages was top class today. Yeah, it was, Derek. I thought it was, was, was good. He was very safe on the ball. His, his handling was very good. Uh, Derek, sure, Derek would be used to playing out the field. So I suppose when he does come away from goal, he's comfortable and he's... He's very good at, at using the ball, um. So that's that's a, a nice position for 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 the manager to be in as well to have the likes of Derek and Ina pushing each other. Um, I believe uh, Gerald Kelly from from Thomas has gone in there as well. Like who's a fine keeper, has had a couple of fine seasons, deserves uh, an opportunity, I'm sure. Um, but the two lads are definitely probably you know the two main keepers, and they're fighting each other for it. And it's a good situation to be in now, like because you know. Derek didn't do anything wrong today, so um, but I'm sure they'll be looking at it and giving them, you know, Ian and Derek equal number of games in the league and see who comes through that and make a difficult decision, then come championship. Just as well, Tony touched on we got ourselves back into the game uh at half time 16 13. You were looking for a good start straight away, and it was nearly similar again, Fergal up until 43 minutes where we get our first score, but Tipperary race into a 21 points to 13 lead. Nearly similar to the first half, we were just a bit slow to get going again. Yeah, and it was kind of a, it was a trait that was there in a lot of games last season as well. Um, if you think back to the, you know, the, 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 the Kilkenny game in Northern Park and, and the Dublin game in Crow Park, we were leaving ourselves with a lot of work to do, but showed great resilience and, you know, determination and, and all of that to, to work ourselves back into it. But then at the same time, you're expending an awful lot of energy, getting back all those scores. And, you know, you might have a lot of hurling done for 10 minutes and you're still only back level again. And it's kind of, you know, we need to try and work out what's going on in the first quarter of each half because we're, we're kind of struggling again, similar to at times last year. And, and it could be just something simple about their setup and can we get on ball? Can we win the throw in? Can we win a free? Can we just start a little bit better and be conscious of that? Um, and that's something I'm sure they're going to be aware of, especially, I mean, no doubt they were conscious of it last year, but it's kind of, you know, raising its head a little bit again today. Um, but again, like they didn't get really, they didn't get any game last week. So, you know, this is for Galway's first proper match. Um, so I, you know, I wouldn't be. I'd be reserving judgment for another few games anyway, and I'm sure it's something that they would be very cognizant of. Tony, I, I just seen there when Fergal was saying that of slow starts last year, you were nodding. I get the sense there that, like, what Fergal touches on there, you exert so much energy on getting yourself back into the game, and then you're almost not doing yourself justice by temporarily racing back into the lead again after halftime. 
Yeah, it did seem to be a pattern last year where we conceded, I don't know, seven, eight, nine points, you know, in one go. And then, you know, we're 10 or 15 minutes, like, working our asses off to get that back. And, you know, when you're trying to finish the last quarter of games, kind of mentally and physically fresh and, and you know, they're the closing stages there and the most important stages of matches. And, you know, maybe you've expended all your energy trying to get back into the game. You know, it's going to probably come back and bite you. So, you know, our concentration at that level just needs to be a lot higher, I think, uh, you know, for a sustained period in games. It's completely different to club level or colleges level where, you know, you really can switch off, you know, even for, you know, three or four balls. Like, you know, it could be, you know, as you see some players coming off today after 20 minutes because, you know, you just have to have that real mental endurance to stay the course and these things and you need to switch really quickly when the ball goes dead into the next play in the next moment and you can't be lingering in past plays or allowing teams to build momentum like that. And, uh, you know, I think we've been a bit poor in that area and inconsistent the last couple of years and, you know, it's something we need to iron out. And, you know, as you alluded to there, there was probably too much of the first half in, in that kind of negative momentum and, and again after half time when we got ourselves into a good position we just started really slowly again and you know powered into it then in the fourth quarter again for three quarters or and probably finished poor enough the last four or five minutes so it's just trying to get more consistent throughout games and you know I think we've been saying that a lot the last year or two about this team and you know it's it's, it's time maybe it got resolved and, and we, we got more consistent in, in those elements be it hook outs or you know getting into position quicker or you know or set up or something tactical that you know needs to be adjusted or, or mentally we just need to be more tuned into what, what, what play is in front of us in that moment. What's the main thing there, Tony, you go about resolving that kind of issue, I suppose, just switching off or the other team getting their purple patch but trying to limit it in one sense? I suppose you, you go through uh, your best quarters and you see what we're doing well from our own pokeouts and, and opposition pokeouts is probably a starting point and you see what we're doing in general play and then you're trying to look at the inconsistent periods and seeing what's actually happening or, you know, players... Uh, executing the roles are they getting back out to position quick enough for the puck outs are they you know um, executing what they should be doing on the ball in the right areas and you know you're trying to bring that kind of consistently through then in, in training from my experience that we're kind of reinforcing that and making sure that it's you know continuously worked on and, and we're seeing that consistency improved after three or four weeks and uh, you know I think that's where you've got to kind of go back to your, your coaching and, and what you're doing during the week to, to build that concentration into it and also that clarity in terms of what we need to be doing well in each moment. Just after that that period Fergal we're 21-14 and 43 minutes after Conor Cooney's point but Again, the reaction really good. Uh, by fifty six minutes after Evans three, we have it back to a, w- a one score game where it's twenty one points to twenty. I think at that stage, our you know we, our forwards definitely started working that little bit harder, and then that that in turn forced Tipperary to probably go along with a lot of ball that they didn't you know, and it was easier then for our backs to defend and and work it. So a lot of it can come down to that like as well you know two or three of the forwards really getting stuck in putting pressure not giving them space our backs tightening up on the forwards getting closer to them and then when they were against the breeze and you were making them deliver from further back the ball was getting held up and that was giving our, our lads time to to set themselves and we were a bit more aggressive I think at times Connor Whelan coming out the field probably helped as well at that time getting on ball and, and carrying a bit of ball Um but it's just to, to get that, I suppose, going back to that word of, of consistency. Why why are we waiting 15 minutes before 15, 20 minutes in each half? Why are we why are we waiting and giving ourselves so much to do? Why couldn't we have started the second half there with the breeze behind us? You know, really go after the throw in, get numbers around us, you know, uh, win that rook, get out, try and win a free, get settled and, and take it from there. You know, why why are we why were we you know, chasing after after Tipperary like we were for those. And Tipperary had got through on numerous occasions as well where they could easily have got goals. So we were under pressure. Like that game could have been out of sight after 15 minutes of the second half. And um, now you did always feel that because Galway came back in the first half and they seemed to have this, and obviously no doubt the lads have brought that, like they'll never give up, and which is brilliant. Uh, you always felt Galway were going to come back again, like, but again, it just was too much. Like, it was by the time Galway got back close to level, Tip 
you know, kind of had a break and off they went again and they finished the game and, and won it emphatically enough. Like and probably we tagged on another couple of scores if it went on for another five minutes. That was that's the way you'd feel from looking at it. So again, we were just leaving ourselves too much to do. Like and by the time you're doing an awful lot of hurling to get six or seven points back at that level. Um so you are so it's 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 something they really need to look at now for the for the next I don't know who their next game is, but they, they definitely have Limerick coming up there at some stage. Um, so I'm sure, I'm sure that'll be a, a target for them, like because you know the Galway will be pushing hard, and they should finish in the top three. That's what you want to be. You want to be there thereabouts, getting close to a semi final anyway in the league. So there's a few things there that they need to iron out, like. But again, you're missing a lot of key players as well, like that will come into that. You know, especially into you know Joseph Cooney's another guy, massive addition there, physical presence. Whether they use him, whether they use him in the half back line, you know, midfield, half forward line, he will give you a huge presence. And you know, Cahal Mannion is a massive player that will be out in that area. You know, you'd love to see maybe Cahal at eleven there, where he can come back out back the field, but he's still that attacking threat, like you know, because Cahal can get in and goal, like Cahal can score points. And you probably need, you know, Whedon um close to goal, like he's he's our main goal threat, like so. Jason just doesn't give you enough consistency. Jason shows you flashes of, you know, unbelievable stuff every so often. And he'd done it today on three or four occasions, but there was 15, 20 minutes at a time there and there was no sign of Jason. So, you know, he has the ability, he's got the size, he's got the pace, he's got everything. But we just don't see enough of him um, at times either. So, um, you know, it, it's at times like that you need key players. And I suppose over the years, the likes of Kenning and these lads were always the guys that you know would stand up and stop that rut. You know, that when you're in that kind of a rut, like and you're you're under pressure, and you know the likes of a Davy Burke would have maybe started talking to lads more out there. And maybe, whatever it is, we need to maybe just slow it down. You know, someone has to go down, take off their helmet. You know, uh, whatever it takes to bro- to break that momentum from the opposition. Um, at times and, and maybe we just were lacking a couple of those guys out there today uh, at those times Just on that from our purple patch uh, Tony within that period if Evan Island probably looks back at it there's probably one or two misses within that period if he gets them it puts us ahead because ultimately he had two misses I think it was so that would have put us ahead but they they were kind of crucial, crucial misses when you look back at it now they were, yeah, which I suppose you wouldn't narrow it down to that either. I think, like you made, you'd be praising him for the great run he made off Wheelow, and like nine times out of ten, he would have slotted that off mm. his right side. Whether he saw the goalie off his line and he was going for the top corner, I wouldn't doubt it. With Evan's ability, it would have been a great finish. Um, and I think he intercepted maybe another puck out and, and took it on his right on the sideline when. Keenan was just coming on his right on the overlap and space in front of him, but maybe he was halfway through a shot before he realised Keenan was coming as well. And I think maybe there was a free off the post as well. So that could put us two or three up and it was, you know, six, seven minutes to go. But listen, I, I think, you know, coming down the stretch in championship matches, you love Evan in those positions again. And I think as the season goes on, he gets get sharper around his execution and his decision making. And, you know, I'd be worse, I think, if we weren't creating those opportunities and he wasn't finding those pockets of space. So, um, you know, you'd be pleased that he put himself in those positions and I've no doubt with his ability that he'll he'll he'll, he'll score them again when it matters most. Should Robert Byrne have got a red card in that period, Tony? Um, I suppose he got a yellow for the tackle on Evan and you know, I think he he didn't lean with an elbow and he didn't lean with the shoulder. I think he's just, you know, physically a very strong man. And, you know, Evan kind of ran into a wall in that period. And, you know, Tom Monnan was probably the victim of another challenge then at that stage as well. And I know Sean Lennon reacted to it. But um, I don't think there was anything in the, the challenge on Tom Monnan other than maybe he used to hurl on the ground after free was given. And it was hard to see on camera. Was there something a bit more there? But... Um, no, I think from what I gathered, I think they were both okay challenges. Maybe his reaction after fouling Tom Mann, Sean Lan reacted fairly aggressively towards it. So maybe he saw something in terms of the use of a hurl after the free was given. Uh, but I couldn't see clearly on TV watching it, to be honest. Do you think he got away with one day for good? Um, yeah, he was probably lucky to stay on the field, wasn't he? Really, like um, any of those kind of 
shoulder challenges like you've seen James Regan's won the, the club final albeit which was a little bit different but anything kind of head high usually they clamped on it. and so he probably was he probably was lucky especially for Evans one he was probably lucky to stay there definitely So something there you, you touched on earlier on Fergal just in regards you were talking about Jason Flynn and it's probably a challenge with some of these players where they can come in and out of games. Like, how do you go about that now as a management, trying to get the most out of some of these players that you're that you're not always seeing in games? Yeah, with with Jason, uh, like I suppose they're probably scratching their head wondering what is the best position for him and where can he where can he do more enough damage and um, maybe leaving him at eleven. You know, keep him around there. Like maybe he does too much moving in and out out in the wing. You know, keep keep him central. You know, try and get ball to him. Can he work off the off the breaks off the inside line? That's kind of where I'd be inclined to be to be trying to get the most out of him is in the half forward line. And um, as I said, I think you need Whelan inside. You'd love, I'd love to see Connor Cooney and Whelan inside and getting enough good ball into them. If if that's if it was the case that they were going with two players inside, and um, and have your your Jason and your Carl Mannion and your your Tom Anahan. In fairness to Tom Anahan, I thought he worked really hard. I think he's having he's really put his hand up um, at the beginning of the season again. You know, in the World Cup games, he was excellent. I think it t- today, like he he brought the fight to Tipperary on numerous occasions. There, he won freeze. He got a couple of scores. He's kind of been really good. To be fair to him, he's one of those guys that is putting his hand up for a starting place. Um, you know, he kind of lost it last year and then was really good coming on in a few games. So I think he really wants to start on that team this year. He's a he's a guy that's that's that is 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 showing up well for them and. You, you probably need the same from a, a Jason, you know, just getting on a little bit more ball, you know, win a couple of frees, win a few rooks, catch a few puck outs. Like he has that ability. He can speed away from you. Like he can shoot off left, right, very smart on the ball. Um, but we just need a little bit more out of him. You know, if you could get, like, I don't know, did Jason score today, did he? Um, no, one to three, all right, but mm. he didn't score. No. Yeah, and like you look at Connor Cooney, then like probably didn't get as much ball, but clipped five points from play. Uh, really economical. So if we could get Jason, as you know, when he gets on ball, to be just using it that little bit better. Like, and again, I suppose it's you know for Jason maybe putting him into a position and leaving him in it, like maybe moving him around the five or six positions doesn't really suit him. Sometimes the game could just bypass you by moving around. But in fairness, as again, he, you know, he did show glimpses and the touch he got there in the second half to spin and, and win the free. Like he caught a few balls, he set up a couple of scores. He he showed glimpses, but again, for me anyway, we we you know it would be great to see a little bit more of Jason and, and see him on the ball more. A big positive, Tony. Uh, very well touched on it. Uh, Connor Cooney clipping five points and. Carrying on his club form into the Galway jersey today has to probably be the biggest positive out of today's performance. Yeah, geez, I think if we can get Connor going uh, anywhere close to his club form with the with the county again this season, I think uh, he'd be a huge addition. I think he just leads the line so well, and you know it comes up with the big plays when they're needed the most. And you know more than that, All Ireland club final to go in on Hugh Lawler, probably one of the best inside defenders in the game at the moment, and cause him untold trouble and. You know, again today, you know, off limited supply, he just met his presence felt in terms of his ball win and his distribution and his ability to score in tight spaces. And, you know, I think uh, it's it's mouthwatering to think that he's hitting, you know, really good form. Wheelow, Brian Concannon, Cahal Mannion, you know, Evan, Tom Monaghan, you know, Joe Cooney potentially, you know, there's, there's loads of options there and, and loads of threats in terms of scoring and ball winning and, you uh, you know, if we can keep everyone fit and, you know, f- training well throughout the season, you know, you could be really, really competitive this year towards the latter stage of the championship. With Connor, I suppose, to previous years, he was probably coming back on the disappointment of the Thomas's campaign. But this year, they're obviously coming back after winning the All Ireland. And you could just tell, even Tony, with the little supply you got today, the confidence was there. Oh yeah, listen, I'd say after losing all Ireland semi finals or finals, it takes a good number of weeks to lift yourself and uh, you know, the bounce you're getting after winning these things sure it's absolutely massive. I'd say he's 
and, and most of the lads from Thomas's are probably gliding into training now and really looking forward to things whereas everything becomes a bit heavy after losing those matches and you know a bit of a draw on you in terms of doing gym or you know training in the mucky conditions or league matches but now all of a sudden I'd say they've a new lease of life and, and there's a fresh kind of confidence in them and you know, sure, David Burke as well. We've only mentioned him a few times. Like he'll be a huge addition to the squad, both on and off the field, and just an incredible leader and incredible decision maker in, in those vital moments. So, um, you know, they're all going to add so much to the squad in terms of on and off the field, and uh, you know, I think it'll inject a lot of confidence into the panel as a whole to have those lads coming in with all Ireland medals in their back pockets. From, I suppose, the last. Four minutes plus the four minutes of injury time where we're outscored one three to a point. Probably disappointed in one sense when we get the ball, it's still 26-24. We cough it up. Sean Lillan has no other option but to foul Stakelum, fouls him, he gets the sin bin and then tip temporary in result get a penalty. Garage O'Connor slots at home. But in one sense, will there be disappointment of how go I finished for him? Uh, they will, yeah. But I, I think it just goes back to you know the amount of energy they expended trying to get back to you know on level terms. And if they can try and sort that out and you know stay close to teams up until that last 10, 12 minutes and be in a position where you're not chasing it, um, and that you're you're you have the energy, I suppose, to push on as well. Like and you know, we, it was it, they'll be frustrated with that. They will be because it did seem. I know when Sean went off, they, they got the penalty and it, it did seem as they could, they could kick on a bit more. They seemed to just get that little bit of burst of energy. But once they got the couple of points free, once they got that, I think they got up two or three points up. Um, you could only see Tip finishing strong. They seemed to be to have that little bit more energy. But again, look, at they had a good, really good game there last week anyway. So that probably stood to them. Um do you know, we have a lot of quality there. Like, we, you know, obviously Kevin Cooney um, is, I think, is a huge loss to the forward line as well with his injury, and and hopefully he'll, hopefully he'll get back in time for for some of the championship because uh, you know he had a massive season last year. You know, he's a player. You know, you'd nearly forget about there when you don't see him there. Obviously, over the last, you know, today, like, but he's a guy that would play for you inside or outside. Yeah, you know, Decky McLaughlin there is out with a finger injury there for a few weeks as well. He's he has been showing up really well. Did showing Jamie Ryan really well for Mary Eye? Did Jamie yeah, Ryan show today in patches that maybe yeah, yeah. maybe he Wasn't could it, be? It, it was great to see Jamie Ryan actually get out there, you know, stay injury free. You, you know, you'd feel sorry from there the, the last time I think he to he he hurt his hamstring in in a warm up, but um. Yeah, like he did, he, you know, he, the, the first touch he got, he, I think he set up a point for Connor. like he got on a ball on the wing where Galway were kind of on top at the time and he picked up a ball, carried it, I don't know, does that to come off it? But he has that bit of energy and he's another guy, like, so, you know, we've named, you know, numerous lads there today and I suppose, it, you know, over the next couple of games, there's probably a bit of pressure going to come on lads to put their hands up. You, you know, there's only so many chances you can get and uh, with these older players coming back in that, they know they can do a job, whether it's coming on or starting. I think a few of these younger lads really need to do, if they get the opportunity over the next few games, you know, it'll be important that they take it and that they we get a performance. And, you know, we do need to get maybe t at least two more wins anyway to get us, to get us through to the next stage. So um, there'll be a lot to play for. But again, hope, you'd like to see Carl Mannion and, and Concanon and these guys coming back and maybe seeing Jamie Ryan start a game and, see Decky McLaughlin start a game. But again, I'd like to go back, you know, see Finton maybe get back into the team as well. But, you know, as well, you're not ruling out, you know, TJ or, or Owen Lawless. You'd like to see Gavin Lee get another couple of games. I think he's, he could be really, he could be a, a starter come championship time, definitely. So there's a huge panel of players there. I suppose just to get the mix right. And again, it's a bit of timing as well. Like, so if Galway can keep, you know, you know, get a bit more of an improvement over the next couple of games and keep pushing, pushing, pushing. But for Galway, you would like to see them, I suppose, pushing to try and maybe win a league as well. Um, and then obviously go on and push on and try and win a Leinster Championship. I think it's important for the, I think it's important for the group that they try and get a bit of silverware this year. 
just on Fergus' point there, Tony Oak, uh, pushing to win the league, they do have Antrim to come next on the 25th in Corrigan. There's challenges with that as well, going to Corrigan. We all know how difficult it is there. Then it's Dublin. So if they win those two games, that should secure them then into Division 1 uh, for next year. But then with that, it comes down to the Limerick game at the end. Uh, even Shefflin talking before the game, he said, we'll probably have to win four out of five games um, to get to this league semi-final. That's obviously the aim now to, I suppose, build towards that Limerick game, but get two wins on the road to be in that position. Yeah, I think all we can afford to go for the league and, uh, you know, get as many competitive games as possible. There's a big panel there and just get a look at everyone. I think the longer they stay in the league, the better. And, you know, last year you probably had, you know, one or two disappointing games in the Leinster Championship that just didn't really provide a test. So the longer Galway stay in the league and get those competitive games like the, the Limericks and, and please God, Dublin and Antrim will bring them a big test for them as well. You know, it'll tell you more about the panel and where we are form-wise and, you know, getting into a semi-final, you get a good crack at a, a Cork or Kenny, the other side maybe would be a great semi-final to get and, you know, you're in going in match ready then for the Leinster Championship and, you know, you can build into the next phase of the season there and, you know, as Fergal alluded to, I think uh, Silverway would add a lot to this group this year in terms of their confidence going into an All-Ireland semi-final if they do progress through the season. And, uh, you know, if you did have a league and a Leinster Championship under your belt, you know, you're going into a semi-final feeling, you know, this could be our year and, you know, we've beaten all we can at this point in the season. And, uh, you know, these are the kind of milestones and stepping stones that the squad, I'm sure, will be aiming for to kind of show the progression on, on, on year three, is it with Henry? What would the league title do for the group, do you think, Tony? Well, listen, it, it'd be good in the moment and in the context of whenever that's finished up, maybe uh, April time or, or the end of March. And, you know, after that, I think everyone would park it fairly quick and realise that, you know, you have your, your four or five game Leinster Championship now to, to aim for. It. So I think, you know, you're just really trying to build performances at this stage of the season and get competition in the squad and, and get the form going. And, you know, you take a league win as... You know that's all it is like, and and you move to the next game, and you know it's it's not really a cliche. It's re it's really important, and you just build performance by performance and, and week by week. And you know I don't think any team, uh, county team, at this point of the season is talking about all Ireland series or anything like that. You, you have to go to the phase that you're in and, and and do that as well as possible and prepare as well as possible. And then when that's done, you're moving to the Lynch or Championship block and, you know, trying to eke out performances there and good preparation as well. And, you know, if that's good enough, then please God, you're entering the all Ireland series and having a cut off at that. And, uh, you know, you're never looking too far ahead because if you do even for one game or one quarter at this level, you know, you, you get fairly humbled fairly quick. So it's Antrim next uh, for the Hurlers on the 25th of February. They have a break uh, next week. Just for yourself, Fergal, uh, obviously stepping up this year from the minors, uh, now as under-20 manager. I suppose no championship game so far, but your training and everything's probably heating up and building towards that. But have you found it a big step up from the minors to the under-20s? You probably found it. Um. Yeah, I suppose. Look at the, there's, there's, there's. It's been a little bit of a step over. Like the, like I suppose, with the players, you know, are, we're fairly familiar with with a lot of them from the last, from the two years at minor, um, and then obviously you're getting to know the guys that are turning twenty this year and and trying to you know pull them all together. Uh, you've kind of three years of players that you pull together at under 20, 18, 19 and twenty year olds. So. Trying to get that balance right, um, and 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 get them going together. Look at we're 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 up and running, all right. Like you know, it's it's February is a bit of a tricky month. Uh, you, the you know University of Galway are, are in a fresher quarter final Wednesday, and they've been playing every Wednesday for the last few weeks. Um, you have ATU Galway have games with a couple of guys there. We've two fellas with UL as well. Then you have you know Prez Prez and Rayfield's guys. And um, playing Prez playing quarter final next weekend, and and Rafe is playing a semi final two weeks after that, and hopefully the Prez will will be in that semi final uh, draw as well. So February is a month of uh, it's there's been a lot of juggling. I would say in that you're trying to just 
keep the players uh, fresh, really, you know, and, you know, try and get them playing, uh, try and get a level of training to a lot of the guys that maybe mightn't be involved in those squads as well. So it's a bit of a balancing act, you know. So, but look at our relationship with, with like Franny and Rayfields and Paul Hoobin in the Prez and, and Davis Hoobin in uh, the University of Galway, like it's, it's all very good. Like, so there's loads of communication there. Again, players themselves are, are the main guys that need to be looked after, especially for this month anyway. And, you know, as them competitions come to a close, more lads become available to us, I suppose, from March on. Like, But then, like, the first round is the end of March and we have a bye in the first game and then we play awfully on the 6th of April. So you don't feel that time coming up on you either. Does it help compared to previous under-20 teams, that they would, like last year for particular, they would have had a lot with the seniors? Is that helping in one sense this year that there's not a large group of players involved? Um, I, I'm sure it does. Like, um, again, I wouldn't have had the experience that the lads would, you know, Brian and the lads would have had for the last, you know, previous years, and we're probably lucky in that regard. And in fairness to Henry and 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 Joycey and the lads, you know, they came to us a couple of months ago and said they were going to leave, and they had their eye on a couple of lads, and they'd identified three or four lads they were interested in, but they were leaving them with us, and. You know, we've had, they've had different lads go in for training sessions with the seniors at different stages. So communication is good there when they need a few lads to go in and, and make up the numbers or they want to play a game or whatever they want to do. Um, they usually contact me and say, that, you know, give us three or four lads and we we'll just pick a different three or four most times and give them all experience in there. So it seems to be working well in both both ways, whereas the lads that go in, you know, can see exactly what's going on at that senior level. And it gives them a little bit of an incentive to try and get there, you know. But for us to be able to prepare with all, you know, your your stronger 20s is obviously a huge advantage and something that when you see, you know, how difficult it was for, for Brian and the lads for the last two years, you definitely sympathise with them in that regard because, you know, looking back at the games last year, they had to line out in nearly all of them games without key players and especially against Offaly in the last game. I think they were without Tiernan, albeit with an injury, but he would have had a heavy load on him at the time. And uh, Liam Collins was was missing as well, where he would have been the main forward. So you can definitely, you know, it was tough going for them. So I think from that regard, um, we are lucky um, that the lads have kind of left us be. Uh, but look, if the lads are showing up well for us, um, there's definitely a path to them for senior and then like the lads have said if, if guys are showing up in the under 20 championship you know they won't be shy to, to bring them in either which is which is great for our guys and for yourself Tony I know previous years you've been involved with inter-county setups in the sports psychology role but uh, this year you're, you're just with a few clubs yeah, um, I suppose the opportunity into counties uh, come every couple of years, and at the moment, yeah, just focus on on the club scene at the moment between football and hurling. Uh, yeah, enjoying the probably lesser involvement to 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 the scale of things inter county at senior level uh, requires a huge commitment uh, both on and off the field, and uh, you know very enjoyable setups to be part of, and uh, you know who knows what opportunities will come in the future. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, that's all uh, we do have time for on the podcast uh, for today. Uh, a massive thank you to Tony and Fergal uh, for coming on and we'll be back as usual ne- next week uh, for another podcast.